Hi guys, welcome to this lesson, which is lesson three on the blues. Lesson one, we covered the blues scale and rhythms. Lesson two, we focused on the bebop scale. And lesson three, here we are today, looking and learning about jazz vocabulary. Now I've done lots of lessons on this, but this might help more beginners because it's super simple because there's only three chords, chord one, chord four, chord five, all dominant seventh chords of a blue so we are in the key of b flat major concert b flat major so that means for trumpet players we're on c7 f7 and g7 as we have been for lesson one and lesson two so what you can see here is part of the resource vocabulary sheet so you can see there there's 18 activities keep us busy for a while uh, i'm just going to talk about today for chord one which is the first six activities okay chord one which is the c7 scale in concert b flat for me so we're going to look at the chord notes we're going to take a recap of the bebop scale and then we're going to look at chromatic enclosure we're going to look at jazz vocabulary in this super targeted way because this isn't the only way of course to learn jazz we can do the traditional method where we transcribe solo we use part of that solo say a clipper brown 251 I've seen that lots of lessons on that and I've even practiced that way myself but that is very a one-dimensional way of practicing in the respect of you are always playing someone else's phrase okay um, by breaking it down and looking at the elements or the vocabulary elements within a phrase I find it much quicker a quicker way to get to the place where you're actually creating your own jazz lines using the vocabulary of these masters so chro chromatic enclosures clifford brown i'll we'll take a look at them we're looking at a scale fragment exercise brilliant for playing over these blues can get us out of a lot of trouble when we can't think of anything else to play activity five we're looking at the fats navarro broken chords this sometimes involves using the the ninth the eleventh and the thirteenth of the chord but I just tend to think of whatever key center we're in. And then we're also looking at enclosures. And I've seen Stan Getz use this type of rhythm. Okay, so let's look at that rhythm sheet for chord one. Okay, I should say this is in B flat, but it also comes in E flat, concert pitch and bass clef, should you want the resources. And all I charge is the price of a nice cup of coffee. And I think because there's so many resources, I'm adding a little bit of cake in there as well for this one. Because it's uh, taken a long time to set up this lesson. That's why it's taken a little bit longer from lesson two to lesson three. Okay, so look, here we are, chord one. Right back to basics, chord one, or I should say exercise one, chord notes. And I've included the ninth in there. You can also include the 11th and the 13th, the F and the A. But the, these chord notes will help. If you play these chord notes on beats one and beats three, you're going to sound, I think, more melodic on those stronger beats. So number two, we're looking at the bebop scale. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. Number three, we are looking at chromatic enclosures and we are chromatically enclosing the chord notes on beats one and beats three. Um, I'm going to show you how you might use this within a line, like a bebop line, but it, it sounds super authentic. You could play it like that if you wanted to. And then I've shown the way that you could use chromatic enclosures descending. Okay, let's have a listen to how that sounds. Number four, we are looking at this Fats Navarro, uh, sorry, at the Tom Harrell type lick. Tom Harrell, fantastic jazz trumpet player. I'm not sure I sang that right, but you can see the pattern. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. Number five is the Fats Navarro lick. Where here you can see we're on the fifth, and then there's the seventh, there's the ninth, there's the eleventh. And here we're on the 
seventh, so that means that's the ninth, that's the eleventh, that's the thirteenth, if we're thinking ex in extensions. But they're just notes within the chord, okay, the notes within the scale. So, you know, if that confuses you, don't think of it that way. Just try to practice it and hear it and learn it that way. That's a much better way than thinking about it. And you, you can really hear that. That's a real bebop type phrase. Let's have a listen to how it sounds on the trumpet. And then number six, this is just ways of enclosing chord notes. So we're starting on the fifth. And then we enclose in the seventh, then the fifth, then the third, and then the tonic. And then I'm doing exactly the same on chord four and chord five. Okay, and then here's the lesson plan if you like for more activities. Once you've practiced and got some of those jazz vocabulary elements into your playing and you're starting to understand how to practice it and how to target it, we can then use it to create phrases. Okay, so so there's not activity one, reminder of the chord notes, number two, the bebop scale, and then number three. I'm showing you, so, you know, we've done the scale, there's chromatic enclosures, the bebop scale, chromatic enclosures, lots and lots of, well, I say lots and lots, it's a very, let's listen to this line, let's just check it out. And then, so what you can see is we're only using the scale, chromatic enclosures, bebop scale, fragments, fat slick, and sometimes chord notes. Okay, so that big long phrase, number three, activity three, only uses about four different types of vocabulary. And I've done the same on the F7 chord, chord four, and the G7 chord, chord five. I'm not going to go through them now. If you decide to download the resources, you will see and be able to practice this material for yourself and see how useful it is. And what this will also do will show you when you're looking at a Clifford Brown solo or a Charlie Parker solo or whoever your favorite musician is that you're trying to emulate, you will start to notice different types of vocabulary within their phrases. Okay, it's they're always built up. It's like the, if you look at a four bar lick or phrase, which many musicians do, I find that the real value of the learning is breaking that phrase down like we're doing here. And then we can really just use these different types of elements put them together and we we can create some nice sounding lines and then that's where your creativity comes in your ear finger coordination the way you've practiced so just remember everything you practice today goes towards the type of player you will be tomorrow so very important how you practice okay and then lastly i've created four jazz etudes <laughs>
Now this isn't the only way to practice jazz, but this is a great way to get some authentic jazz vocabulary into your ears and fingers in a way that you know why and how to practice it. So you could do this on um, different chords, you could practice this on different jazz standards, okay? And indeed I have in the past, like on the how to sound like Clifford Brown, easy bebop lines and also the lessons I created on There Will Never Be Another You. I'm going to put a link in the description as well as to the resources for this lesson to my page on Jazz Etudes where I have listed all the lessons that I've created on YouTube up to now which may or may not, which may or may not help you. If you subscribe to my newsletter there are 11 different emails that you will receive all with some type of resource, etude, lesson, some type of PDF resource or jazz etude to help take your playing forward or maybe just an activity that's fun to play. Okay guys, thanks for watching the video. If you've lasted this long, remember to please like, comment and share and hopefully I'll see you very soon for the next lesson in the blues. Bye for now.